The next item of business is a statement by Jean Freeman on the Scottish Government's response to the Sturrock Review. And the Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Jean Freeman for a 10-minute statement, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm grateful for this opportunity to update members on the findings of the fully independent review I commissioned, led by John Sturrock QC, into allegations of a culture of bullying and harassment in NHS Highland. The independent review is published in full today alongside the immediate response from the Scottish Government. Let me start by offering my sincere thanks to John Sturrock for his significant personal commitment to this undertaking, demonstrated by the thoroughness of the review and the substantive, detailed and thoughtful report he has delivered. His report focuses in its conclusions and recommendations on repairing relationships and the practical steps and the leadership needed to restore trust and build a truly exemplary workplace culture in NHS Highland. Mr Sturrock has evidenced his conclusions from all of those he heard from and I want to also put on record my sincere thanks to everyone who engaged with the review, especially to those who shared their own often very difficult personal experiences. I commissioned this review in November as it concerned me greatly that a group of staff in NHS Highland felt that they had no option but to raise their concerns publicly. It was clear to me that despite the steps, the interventions and the support that had been taken up to that point, very serious concerns remained and it was essential that these were heard. I was also keen to ensure that NHS Highland staff had the opportunity to access a safe space in which individual and collective concerns could be raised and that this was provided through a review with a perspective that was independent of both government and the board, an impartial perspective that, in listening and understanding, would also focus on proposals that would secure and promote an open, transparent and inclusive workplace culture. I believe passionately in the NHS Scotland values of care and compassion, dignity and respect, openness, honesty, responsibility, quality and teamwork. And I know that staff in NHS Highland believe passionately in those values too. Our collective belief in these values is critical to our capacity to deliver the safe, effective, person-centred care people deserve. But I also know that belief in these values has to be evidenced by behaviours that reflect the values. NHS Highland has very many very caring, supportive, diligent and highly skilled staff. But this extensive review has identified a number of significant cultural issues that have contributed to both actual and perceived behaviours in NHS Highland that have not always reflected these values. That can neither be acceptable nor allowed to continue. So now we need to engage constructively with the findings, the conclusions and the recommendations of the review. We must also reflect, as John Sturrock points out, that there are also a number of staff whose personal experience of working in NHS Highland is not one of a bullying culture and who have equally legitimate concerns that need to be heard and taken account of. Whatever else we may do, it is absolutely right that staff in NHS Highland are at the centre of that engagement and dialogue. That is the only way to secure the sustainable restoration of trust and shared purpose that is essential to a positive working culture. So I have made very clear to the board that I require them and the wider leadership of NHS Highland to carefully consider this report and actively engage with staff at every level to consider the conclusions and recommendations and how these can be positively applied. Now, whilst the review considered matters in Highland, it is clear to me that there are important issues raised here that require serious reflection across the health service more broadly. What the review articulates about how we work to build supportive workplace cultures, to engender and encourage behaviour that reflects our NHS values is absolutely of general application. So this is not just an opportunity for NHS Highland, it is an opportunity for us all in NHS Scotland. 
I am well aware that concern about bullying and a desire to secure a positive culture is shared across our health service. So as a result, I intend to bring together the leadership of our boards, including staff and union representatives, our Royal Colleges and professional and regulatory bodies to examine how collectively we can take forward measures to support and promote an open and honest working environment for all our staff. In particular, I will be asking the collective leadership what more we need to do to effectively deliver the behavioural and attitudinal improvement in leadership and management that sits at the heart of the Sturrock Review. We will commence this important work in the summer by hosting a summit on wellbeing, engagement and employee experience in NHS Scotland. And I'm delighted that John Sturrock has agreed to join us for that first meeting. There are other steps that I intend we will take. The review highlights the opportunity to improve the relationship between boards and government. It highlights the dilemma that's not always satisfactorily resolved about when government supports and when government intervenes. And the need also to move with some pace on the improvements already identified in the Blueprint for Good Governance published earlier this year that aims to further strengthen a board's vital scrutiny and assurance work. That includes enhancing the recruitment, training and development of board members with greater consistency across NHS Scotland. I've also reflected on how we can ensure that all NHS Scotland staff across all boards and irrespective of their role have faith in the systems we put in place to allow them to speak up, to raise concerns or put forward ideas and be confident that they will be listened to and respected without anxiety about negative consequences. That is, in part, the work already underway to improve our workforce policies, to ensure a people-centred focus that is consistent in its policy, but also in its application across the NHS. On the 30th of April, as members know, we introduced legislation to this parliament to allow the Scottish Public Service Ombudsman to take on the role of the independent national, national whistleblowing officer for NHS Scotland. The SPSO will have the authority to investigate how whistleblowing cases have been handled, make recommendations and lay reports before the Scottish Parliament, aiming to enhance public confidence and scrutiny in the system. And we will now proceed with recruiting the new non-executive whistleblowing champions to every board so that we have these in post by the end of this year. These non-executive whistleblowing champions will provide assurance that boards are complying with NHS Scotland's policies on whistleblowing and they will have the authority to escalate concerns directly to me where they feel that issues have not been appropriately addressed at board level. In the coming weeks, I will again visit NHS Highland to hear from myself how they, how they are progressing the work from this review. Presiding Officer, I appreciate that this is indeed a substantive report and an important piece of work. And I understand that members will wish to take time to reflect on its contents and on what I have said today. I also understand that members will be keen to hear how we make progress and in particular the outcome of the work I will lead with colleagues from across our health service, our Royal Colleges and our professional bodies on our collaborative leadership to promote a culture that reflects NHS values. The concern and determination to take this opportunity to set the right course for our NHS is, I know, shared across this chamber, and the work to do so should be a shared endeavour. Following the summer recess, I will update the Health and Sport Committee and will be happy to discuss our progress with them at that, at that time, if they would find that helpful. And I will, of course, uh, be happy to keep party spokespeople up to date and to discuss all of these matters with them. Presiding officer, I am committed to doing all we can to ensure that everyone in NHS Scotland feels valued, safe and supported. That matters greatly to every person who works in our health service, but it also matters greatly to every patient we serve. I commend this statement to Parliament. Uh, thank you, Cabinet Secretary. And the Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement, and I'll allow around 20 minutes for that. 
Uh, could those who wish to ask a question please press the request to speak buttons and I call Edward Mountain. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I'd like to thank uh, the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement, and more importantly, I'd like to thank John Sturrock for his detailed report. It was only the Scottish Government and casual observers who didn't recognise there was a serious problem in NHS Highland. John Brown's Governance Review, published in May 2018, proved it. And when four senior clinicians made allegations of bullying in September 2018, and I called in the same month for an independent inquiry on the, from the First Minister. The government was still dithering. And finally, when we did get an inquiry, and a very substantive one it is too, we learn, and I quote, that there was fear and intimidation amongst the staff, some who have suffered significantly and suffered serious harm. And according to the report, it appears that the Scottish Government knew about the dysfunctional nature of NHS Highland in autumn 2017 and yet did nothing about it, waiting to see if others would. In my 40 years of professional experience, presiding officer, I have never read such a damning report on management. And in her statement, I did not hear once from the Cabinet Secretary the word sorry. So let me start by welcoming the belated actions of the Cabinet Secretary. But to move forward, we need to resolve the past by healing. So let me give the Cabinet Secretary the opportunity on behalf of the Scottish Government to start off the process of rebuilding our health service by apologising to the staff, patients and people of the Highlands for this situation, which is in my mind attributable purely to poor executive management. And that is backed up by Mr Sturrock. Thank you. Jean Would you apologise? So I'm grateful to Mr Mountain. Uh, I have already apologised to NHS uh, staff in the Highlands and will do so again. I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, I do think, though, that in addition to the apology, what NHS staff in Highlands and across our health service expect is, uh, and will judge us by, how we respond to this very positive and substantive report that doesn't shirk from highlighting where there have been failings, but also argues very strongly that the approach that now must be taken is one that is restorative and healing and aims to move it forward. And in that regard, I think we need to be careful, all of us, about the language we use. So I do not accept that the Scottish Government did not recognise the problem or that it dithered, and I certainly don't accept that it did nothing about it. But as uh, Mr Sturrock highlights, and as I said in my statement, there is a dilemma from as early as 2017. Senior officials from the Scottish Government were working with NHS Highlands, with the board and with others to try and improve the governance and the relationships there. There is a dilemma for any government, not just this one, about when do you provide support and help and encouragement and when do you draw a line and say, that's not working, we now need to intervene. That is what we did. Now, with hindsight, there may be a case that we should have done that earlier or that we shouldn't have done it when we did it. The fact is, we are where we are. We have a substantive report now. And now our job collectively is to work out exactly how we take that forward, not only in NHS Highland, but across our health service. David Stewart. Thank you, President Officer, and could I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement and acknowledge the Cabinet Secretary's initiative in asking John Stadick QC to review the claims of bullying within NHS Highland. NHS Highland is my home board area. I've dealt with the board for over 20 years in two parliaments, from chief executives and board members to cleaners and patients. No amount of experience prepared me for the GMB organised event in the autumn of last year. Over 60 people attended who spoke with one voice on the toxic culture of bullying within the organisation. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what new system can be put in place for all those who lost jobs, who left jobs, who suffered mental health problems? We must never forget their experience. And what assessment has the Cabinet Secretary made on the effect that this bullying has had on the credibility of NHS Highland and its ability to recruit and retain staff? Let us look to the future and the implementation of the re review recommendations where staff in NHS Highland and beyond can start afresh in safety and security as respected, dedicated professionals free from the dark cloud of bullying. Jean Freeman. 
I'm grateful to Mr Stewart um, for his uh, comments and for his question and I absolutely recognise uh, the long history he has of positive engagement in these matters and, and strong interest in these matters and I completely understand uh, how unprepared he would have been as he said for that GMB uh, meet, uh, convened meeting. Uh, as I think we were too and Mr Sturrock was hence the uh, lengthening of the time that, that the review has taken for the numbers of people who wanted to speak to him and give evidence to him about their personal experience. He makes the point in his review uh, about providing uh, support for those in t uh, who have been the, the, on the, who have experienced bullying or harassment uh, and who have suffered uh, in terms of their uh, emotional and mental health as a consequence and the board is actively looking at how it might do that uh, and will actively consider what other steps it needs to take because the central thrust of John Starrett's report, as well as reflecting the views that were expressed to him and the evidence, if you like, presented to him, was to recognise that the only way to move forward here is to uh, heal first and heal by moving forward. So he is very clear in his report and NHS Highlands Board understands absolutely they are uh, uh, quoted uh, today in saying that they must embrace the all the recommendations of the report and act and they are uh, have begun that work now uh, and, and begun the work too to look at how they will engage directly with staff because I was really keen that this isn't a report just for this chamber this is a report for NHS Highland and so they need to engage with their staff to understand uh, whether or not staff want more than is in the report itself. The last point on recruitment and retention, it's impossible to have a scientific view of that, but it is one of the concerns raised by those who themselves had not experienced bullying and harassment about the impact. So we need to consider what we do about that too. Okay, can I ask for a shorter questions and indeed answers, please, Cabinet Secretary, to try and get through all the questions. Gil Patterson, followed by Mel Spriggs. Hey, many thanks, Presiding Officer. Uh, many thanks, Presiding Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline what commitments NHS Highlands have made on implementing the recommendations of the review and whether a timeline, excuse me, <coughs> timeline of implementation will be established? Jean Freeman. Um, so NHS Highland are committed. They are hosting a suite of engagements with all their staff to ensure the recommendations are implemented. And in the coming days, they will set out uh, their specific timeline. Uh, as I said, I'll be visiting the board soon, but in addition, uh, I will also undertake, as John Sturrock recommends, a full re review of progress that's been made uh, after 12 months from the publication of the report. Miles Briggs, followed by Monica Lane. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. There's clearly a lot of learning from the Sturrock Review for the wider Scottish NHS. And what we've uh, read in the report today, I think, clearly points toward N NHS Highland, maybe just being the tip of an iceberg in terms of systemic bullying and institutionalised bullying, as outlined. So the Cabinet Secretary says she wants to be judged on how we respond. Can I ask, therefore, will she commit to bring forward a full debate on the report to Parliament on government time at the earliest opportunity? Jean Freeman. So I'm happy to make that commitment in addition to the commitment I made about updating um, the sport, uh, Health and Sport Committee and discussing with party spokespeople. I think we need time to reflect on what is a 176 page report uh, and know a bit more about how Highland are responding to that. But in the wider debate, because it is a shared endeavour, I'm very happy to commit to that. A mistake on my behalf, I'm sorry, it would be Rhoda Grant, followed by John Finney. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, can I pay tribute to the GMB for bringing this serious issue to our attention? And the little I've read of the report and the time allowed is absolutely horrific. However, similar concerns have been expressed by other health boards, Lothian, Tayside, Borders, Ayrshire, Naran, Greater Glasgow and Clyde. Therefore, can I ask if this is the culture of NHS Highland or the culture of the NHS in Scotland, fed by staff shortages and cuts putting enormous pressure on everyone within the NHS? And if that's the case, what is the Cabinet Secretary going to do to tackle this to ensure that the NHS is adequately resourced in order to allow staff to work in an open and collaborative fashion? We're getting a wee bit long with the questions again, Chief Freeman. 
So I, I don't accept that uh, a significant proportion of the difficulty here is around the, the financial resourcing uh, of our board. And I don't think our boards and I don't think the start report uh, justifies that at all. What it talks about, though, is the quality of relationships, because you see we can have as many policies as we want. But if the relationships inside a board or any organisation are not positive, healthy, open relationships, then policies won't resolve it. So I have set out what I intend to do in the immediate term. I am open to other practical propositions, but the key thing for me is to hear also from our Royal Colleges, our regulatory bodies, our staff side representatives, which of course include our unions, and the leadership of our health boards across Scotland about what more they believe they can collectively contribute to creating that positive workplace culture. John Finney, followed by Alex Cole Hamilton. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary twofold? Firstly, for commissioning this work, and secondly, for early sight of, of, of the report. And, and of course, thank Mr. Sturrock for his very detailed work, which I have to be honest, I have not digested in detail. I have, however, seen Cabinet Secretary the recommendation in respect of Argyll and Butte and the suggestion of a separate review there, um, importantly undertaken by an outside person. I wonder if you were in a position to outline any timeline for that, please. Jean Freeman. Uh, I'm glad Mr Finney has uh, pointed out to that uh, separate review re um, recommended by uh, Mr Stark. I've asked the Board of NHS Highland to consider uh, what advice they want, may want to give me on that. Uh, my senior officials are also looking at how we can, how we can take that forward and who, that independent, who might lead that independent review. And I'm happy to update the member once we've concluded. Alex Cole-Hamilton, followed Thank you, by Deputy. Emma Hart. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. The report states that senior people in Scottish Government were aware for a considerable period of time, which ought to have signalled the seriousness of matters. Um, what changes will the Cabinet Secretary now instruct to processes um, so that future warning signs escalated to her government will be dealt with from the outset? Jean Freeman. Um, so I'm not convinced that it is changes to processes that actually can resolve that particular matter. Uh, because uh, uh, senior officials in the Scottish Government Health Directorate uh, pay, pay very close attention to how our boards are operating in terms of their, their governance, their scrutiny and, uh, and so on. We have a number of other ways of gathering information. We have the uh, regular chairs meeting with me. We have the regular chief executives meeting. It's back to this dilemma about um, when does a, a government move from uh, supporting people to fulfil their responsibilities as leaders in a local board situation to intervening directly uh, when that doesn't appear to be working. And that is why I said, as a government, we need to reflect on that, accepting that it is a judgment every single time, uh, and we need to uh, see if there is more that we can do to improve uh, the consistency with which we make a judgment so that people understand the basis on which we might intervene more than simply the escalation framework, which of course has NHS Highland currently on level four. Emma Harper, followed by Donald Cameron. Thank you, President Officer. I'm aware that the Scottish Government are currently in the process of appointing a National Whistleblowing Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline how the National Whistleblowing Officer will work with whistleblowing champions across health boards to ensure a collaborative approach is taken to promote best practice? Jane Freeman. So the Independent National Whistleblowing Officer is uh, what I referred to in my statement uh, and the uh, legislation to allow SPSO to take on that role. Uh, is uh, currently before Parliament. Um, the, prior to it going li live, there will be a six-month uh, training period uh, and implementation period. We expect it to go live from the summer of 2020, by which time those uh, non-exec whistleblowing champions will be in post. Uh, we intend that they are in post uh, by the end of this calendar year. And it will then be uh, for uh, the independent uh, whistle, national whistleblowing officer and those in, uh, non-exec uh, uh, board champions uh, to come to an, an agreement about when they will escalate any matters to me, but also uh, when they would escalate matters uh, to the independent whistleblowing champion. The final point I'd make, though, uh, presiding officer, is um, whistleblowing is a reflection of a culture that's not working. And the key then is 
what more do we need to do to get the workplace culture to work whilst we have proper whistleblowing policies in place? Donald Cameron, followed by David Torrance. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I also ask about um, our Garland Butte in spe uh, specifically? Um, paragraph 27.29 of the report um, of, of Mr. Stark states that he was concerned to hear from a number of sources about particular problems in some of the island communities and of a management culture located in Loch Gilped and Oban. And he ends by saying, ends that chapter by saying that he's persuaded a specific review of management practices in Argyll and Butte is necessary. And because of the nature of some of the allegations implicate man management at a very senior level, consideration should be given to this being conducted by someone from outside. What response does the Cabinet Secretary make to Jean that? Jean Freeman. So, so as I've said, I completely accept that recommendation. Uh, I will give active consideration to how we might uh, engage that review very quickly. I will hear from NHS Highland, who of course are under new leadership, about what advice they might want to offer me, and then I will determine who independently will conduct that review. David Torrance, for a quick question, please, followed Thank by you. Lewis MacDonald. Thank you, President Officer. Can the Cabinet Secretary outline how lines of communication between clinical and senior staff can be improved to ensure that all NHS staff feel supported at work? Jean Freeman. So, um, th there is in, in all our boards a, a clear governance arrangement which should allow, through uh, the medical director and also the chief, chief executive, uh, constant communication between clin clinical leaders and others. Uh, nonetheless, effective communication is a key feature within the report. And in addition to looking at the arrangements and processes that currently exist within our boards, talking to those Royal Colleges, as I outlined earlier, will provide for me any additional advice that they want to give us about how their uh, members that they represent in terms of the Royal Colleges, how that can be improved in individual boards or generally across the health service. Lewis MacDonald. Thank you very much. I look forward to the Cabinet Secretary coming to the Health and Sport Committee to address these issues, <coughs> as she has indicated. In the meantime, can I ask her to reflect further on the Committee's recommendation last year that an independent investigative and reporting line for NHS whistleblowers might well assist in the new structures, with the new structures she's putting into place? Jean Freeman. So I'm happy to reflect on that and uh, uh, to see how, in addition to the... Uh, whistleblowing a uh, helpline that does exist, what more that might add, and to respond directly then to the committee in that regard. <clears throat> um, quick last question, please, Claire Adamson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware that in 2017, a survey across NHS Scotland showed that 85% of staff reported that they had not experienced bullying and harassment from colleagues. Every one of these experiences of bullying and harassment should be of concern and is um, something that is completely unacceptable. In light of the recommendations, can the Cabinet Secretary outline how those who have experienced bullying or harassment at work will be supported in coming forward with their experiences? I didn't really recognise a quick question there, however. Jean Freeman. <laughs> so, <clears throat> we already have policies in place, but what the Sturrock Review uh, identifies for us uh, alongside uh, is the importance of the work that we are undertaking to ensure we have a, a once for Scotland approach to a number of our workplace policies including those in bullying and harassment not just a policy but an application that is consistent across all our health boards uh, so that gives us the opportunity then to consider organizational cultures in all the boards and identify with the staff there and through for example the uh, partnership forums which involve staff and union representatives what more can be done in each board to ensure that those policies are implemented in a way that, that is speedy, that is open, that allows staff to come forward and be listened to with respect and is safe in terms of no negative impact on them simply for raising their voices. Thank you. That concludes questions on the Scottish Government's response to the Sturrock Review. Uh, apologies to Fulton McGregor for being unable to take his question. And we'll move on to the next item of business. If you could do so quickly, please.